God is love. But no one ever imagined it would look like this. A 33-year journey of redemption took its final agonizing steps on the Via Dolorosa. Some 2,000 years ago, the curse of sin at last lost its power over mankind. Our humanity, for all its brilliance, creativity, and supposed strength, had its limits, after all. We were broken, prideful, fearful, and in the dark. Our sin had separated us from the true light of the Father, and we had followed its path deeper and deeper into the fog of life unfulfilled. It was the broken body of Christ Jesus, the Son of God, that brought us back. It was his tortured body that made ours whole. The most revolting death imaginable become the most revolutionary sacrifice of all time. Jesus Christ paid the ransom for you, for me, for our whole world. In a life of astounding miracles and breathtaking ministry, his greatest gift was his life for ours. Father, our Abba, loves each of us as though there were only one of us. The Almighty One chose Himself to become the afflicted one, so that nothing would separate us from the Father ever.
Jesus' blood and righteousness. I did not trust your sweetest friend, but holy trust in Jesus' name. We sing Christ alone.
morning. You are our redemption, Jesus. And we just say this morning a huge thank you. Can you say amen to that church? Well, a big welcome this morning and thank you for being in church this morning. I know today we have so many friends and family that are here and we're just so thrilled that we have our online campus who are joining us this morning. That's that's a new campus that we have through technology who are, who are part of our church now. So I reckon it'd be awesome if here in the Hills Room we'd say hi to our church family who are online. Good morning. And I know there are lots of people visiting Sydney this morning and I hope you're enjoying our beautiful, terrible autumn weather, which is like a heat wave at the moment a little bit. It's so good. So a big welcome to Sydney and we're thrilled you've come to Hillsong this morning and lots and lots of family and friends this morning joining us for Good Friday services. Thank you for taking the time to be with us this morning. We know you're gonna love this morning's services and um, we're gonna have a great time together. Do you know every time that, oh, by the way, my name is Donna Crouch and I'm one of the pastors. Just thought I'd introduce myself. <laughs> one of the pastors here at the church. And every time that we do get together, we take getting together really, really seriously. We believe that we are part of God's family. And when people are celebrating, we celebrate with them. And when people are hurting, we take the time to pray. Because Jesus said, you know, I want you to pray. I want you to stand together and pray in my name. And in my hand are many, many, many prayer requests that come in through Hillsong Channel and from people who've taken the time to write out prayer requests and just some of the things that we're praying for this morning. A 17 year old boy was hit by a bus this week and he is in hospital and needs a miracle. A young person has written that there is a lot of tension in their home and they're really needing God to turn things around. And there's a little little baby that's been in a coma for far too many weeks. I was at a service yesterday for, of a beautiful family that tragically lost their teenage son just through a health issue. And this Easter they are grieving the loss of their beautiful teenage son. And when people are hurting, our hearts hurt too. And we are praying that God's resurrection, healing, power, comfort, and strength. He's the Good Shepherd. He doesn't just see the crowd here, He sees the one. And where we can't, He can. And so as a church family, would you, however you pray, in, some of us, we put our hands out as just a way of saying we're in on this. But however you pray, could, could you with us pray together? Let's pray to Jesus this morning, Lord. So Father, this morning, we lift up every one of these needs, Lord. They're more than, letters written to You on a piece of paper, Lord. They represent, Lord, thousands of people and hundreds of families that right now are needing Your touch from heaven. And on this Good Friday morning, we are asking that this morning, that today, this weekend, that every family would sense the beautiful hand of our Saviour God, the beautiful hand of our healing Father, the beautiful hand of our comforting Shepherd to be at work, Lord, with this little baby in a coma, Lord, with this boy in hospital, tragically hit, Father, with families that are in turmoil, with people needing jobs and dads who wanna provide for their family, Lord, of cancer that is ravaging bodies, that, Lord, this morning, that Your healing ability, Lord, would turn situations around. And Lord, we can't do this, but we know that You can because You're alive and You are able and You are a miracle working God. And we ask this in Your mighty Name and we give You all the glory and all the praise in Your mighty Name and the people of God said together, Amen and Amen. And the great thing is we always get praise reports in. Someone is thanking God, Dawn is thanking God for a restored marriage and a healthy family. And Adam is praising God for full recovery from a stroke. We don't make this stuff up, people write in. And, um, and Lulu is praising God for a family reunion and a new job opportunity. Nicole is thanking God for a new, for a new job. So thank you, Lord, for answered prayer. Amen. Well, it wouldn't be church if you didn't take a few seconds to say hi to somebody as you take your seat. So just really quickly introduce yourself to somebody nearby as you grab your seat.
You can catch up afterwards. We've got welcome lounges right throughout the church with hot cross buns. We'd love to host you, especially if you are new or visiting. So good. <laughs> I'm gonna ask Peter Toggs to come and encourage us with part of our worship in our church, which is our giving. Thanks, Togsy. Thanks, Donna. Good morning, church. Good Friday to you. I may have said to someone this morning, Merry Easter. And uh, the look on their face said it all. So, hey, we're gonna continue in our worship right now. And we're gonna come around our giving and the ways are behind me on the screen. You can follow that. Uh, the app's actually an awesome way to give. If you're online, the online campus, uh, there's a link there that you can click. I'm gonna read from 1 John 3.16. You may know John 3.16, which is, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son and so on. But this is 1 John 3.16. And it says this, This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down His life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need, but has no pity on them, how can, we lo how can the love of God be in that person? Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and truth. You know what I love about this moment is it's us actioning. It's us not just saying, but it's us putting into action God's love. The truth is John 3, 16 paints a picture of who God is in that He loved us so much that He gave His one and only Son. But I love 1 John 3, 16. It teaches us how to outwork this love that was so freely given to us is now freely given to others. You know, this moment right here is not just about us. It's not just about who's in the four walls of the building right here. It's about reaching other people. It's about the Kingdom of God advancing. It's about blessing others. This is the love of God. You know, generosity in its, in its fullness is exactly what we are considering and being reminded of today, the cross, in that He sacrificed His love for us. Why? Because He loved you so much. In this moment, that's exactly what we're doing. We are giving, we are sacrificing so that others may live in Jesus' Name. Do you believe that? Why don't you grab in your hand what you're gonna give and I'm gonna pray for each and every one of you. Father, thank you so much, Lord, for a church that is faithful, God, that gives to you week in. Lord, because you were faithful with us, God, whilst we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And so, God, I pray that you'd bless every person that gives and today. In Jesus' Name I pray, Amen, Amen. God bless you, church, as you give. And we're gonna go to the screens right now and see that's all that's coming up in Church Life. Check out the screens.
to pull out of you. There's a vigor that God has on the inside of you. You are destined for greatness. You got greatness all over your life. This is God's idea. You are destined for greatness. Our Easter weekend at Hillsong is going to be absolutely beautiful. On Easter Sunday morning, we have Resurrection Sunday services. And uh, we have our 8 a.m. service over in the Epicentre, 9 a.m. here and 11.15 a.m. here. And it's gonna be beautiful. And part of what we're doing is water baptisms. And if you have never been baptised, you might wanna think about that. You can still register, there is room for you. You can register after this service. For, that would be pretty special, wouldn't it, on Easter Sunday morning to get baptised. So if you'd like to do that, you can do that after the service. But this morning, we've got something very, very special. Pastor Brian has prepared a beautiful Good Friday, yeah, Good Friday message. And what we do in our church, whenever the Word is preached, we like to stand because we respect people who have prepared the Word, but we also know God's Word is powerful. So can we, um, can we welcome God's Word and Pastor Brian? Gonna, and then we're gonna look at the screens and take our seats. So enjoy, thank you. groaned under their slavery and cried out. Their cries for relief from their hard labour ascended to God. God listened to their groan. God remembered His covenant with Abraham, with Isaac and with Jacob. God saw what was going on with Israel. God understood. Moses said to them, go at once and slaughter the Passover lamb. Take a bunch of hyssop, dip it into the blood in the basin and put some of the blood on the door frame. The blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when God sees the blood, He will pass over you. I wonder if you can guess where I am. Egypt, it's Good Friday. I wanna wish you the very best Easter, where of course we think about our Lord Jesus Christ. But I wanna start with Egypt. I want you to think about God coming down out of Egypt. You see, John chapter one, verse 29 to 30, in the message it says the very next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and he yelled out, here He is, God's Passover Lamb. He forgives the sins of the world. This is the man I've been talking about, the one who comes after me, but is really ahead of me. When I think of Passover, I often think of an overpass. Bobby and I have often flown into an airport in the north of Italy called Genoa. And it's an amazing, crazy place. Like a lot of Italy, the roads are old, not made for today. And so it's chaotic below, so it's shambolic in fact, a lot of confusion on those little streets. And so that's why an overpass to take modern traffic. Well, that overpass collapsed last year, which is horrific. And I can't even imagine now all of that traffic that was on the bridge now down in that confusion. And then I think about God. And when I think about Jesus as a Passover lamb, I sort of think of, Jesus a Passover. So get us rid of the greatest confusion, the destruction and the shame and the guilt that comes from sin. Well, in Jesus, we have been given an overpass or Passover that will never collapse and will deliver us from the punishment for our sins. I'm gonna talk about Passover and how it applies to Good Friday, but first, let me remind you of a little bit of Egyptian biblical history to see what God has done 
right here. Egypt is actually a place of deliverance for God's people. First, it was Joseph who became Prime Minister here under Pharaoh himself, the second most powerful person in all the land. It was Joseph's godly wisdom that enabled people to experience deliverance from famine. Then of course, Moses, through whom there was deliverance from slavery and oppression. And then ultimately Jesus, who himself as a baby was brought to Egypt to escape death by the King Herod. And so for him, Jesus, it saved him from death so he could ultimately fulfil his greater purpose when he died for all humankind. And of course, through Jesus, we've been delivered from our own Egypt, our own sinfulness and worldliness. Through Him, there is an overpass to a life where we live saved, we live called, we live forgiven and we live free. So it's in the Gospel of John where I started that the forerunner of Jesus, John the Baptist, gave meaning to the thought of back to the future. Maybe it was the original. You see, he looked back well over a thousand years from his lifetime in Israel, 2,000 years ago, to the Egyptian slavery here, at least 3,000 years ago. Now that may have confused you, but listen carefully. I'm talking about Egypt and Moses' time and the Exodus, and then I'm talking about John the Baptist and Jesus' time, and then looking forward to our time. And of course, John the Baptist, he didn't just look all the way into the future. He actually looked forward three years to the Lord's Supper, which happened on the Passover. So it was actually the Passover meal. So when Christ's death was imminent, and ultimately John the Baptist saw forward into this time now. In John chapter 1, verse 29 and 30, I already read it. It says that when John saw Jesus coming toward him, he said, here He is, God's Passover Lamb. He forgives the sins of the world. So very, very powerful. So I've been talking about the one who comes after me, but is really ahead of me, John the Baptist said. Sounds to me like back to the future. Came after me, but is really ahead of me. So here we are on Good Friday, remembering the sacrifice Jesus made for us reflecting on His death that gives us life. And now as we reflect on a Friday, just like the first Good Friday over 2,000 years ago, it certainly wasn't just any old Friday. The truth is a lot of people like Fridays. Why? Well, it's the end of the working week and the beginning of a weekend. So that's why some people think Fridays are good. But hey, this was not just any Friday. This Friday was a standout, history-changing, life-transforming, sin-redeeming, sickness-healing Friday. Whoa, I like that. You see, it was Passover and Jesus was about to become the Passover lamb. John knew when he first laid eyes on Jesus, who he was and why he had come. So he not only saw three years into the future to what we call the Last Supper, which was on the Passover, but he saw over a thousand years back from Jesus' time through the history of God's people and promises to the first Passover, which happened right here in Egypt. Jesus, who John said came after him and was also before him. Jesus, the Passover lamb, whose blood brought salvation, whose death brought life, whose last supper was also the Passover meal and He was the Lamb to be slain. So what is a Passover lamb? Well, the first Passover took place right here in Egypt. The first and original Passover, which John the Baptist recalled when he spoke about Jesus. That first Passover that set God's people free from Egyptian slavery. That first Passover here was the original Good Friday and gives us insight into why Good Friday is just so, so good. Exodus chapter 12, verse three to seven. It says, announce to the whole community of Israel that on the 10th day of this month, each family must choose a lamb or a young goat for a sacrifice, one animal for each household. If a family is too small to eat a whole animal, 
let them share with another family in the neighbourhood. Divide the animal according to the size of each family and how much they can eat. The animal you select must be a one-year-old male, either a sheep or a goat with no defects. Take special care of this chosen animal until the evening of the 14th day of the first month. Then the whole assembly of the community of Israel must slaughter their lamb or young goat at twilight. They are to take some of the blood and smear it on the sides and top of the door frames of the houses where they eat the animal. So Exodus chapter 3, verse 7 and 10 says, And the Lord said, I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. So I have come down. Remember, I'm talking about God coming down to take them out of Egypt, to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up from that land to a good and large land, to a land flowing with milk and honey, to the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hevites and the Jebusites and the Flebites. Sorry. Had to add it in. (laughs) Dad's jokes, they call them. Well, now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come to me. And I've also seen the oppression with which the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now therefore, and I will send you to Pharaoh, that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. That's God speaking to Moses. You see, it had been 400 years that Moses' people have been enslaved here. Generations have been held captive oppressed and living as slaves rather than living as the people of promise that God intended for them to be. So God has that same intention for you and I to be people of great promise, experiencing life and life to the full. Yet so many of us are not fully living there. It's like we too can be held captive, bound by all sorts of things that stop us reaching our potential. Things that keep us in Egypt, Things like our insecurities, our shame, our guilt, our own sin and the sin of others. In that respect, we're just like the Israelites and just like them, God wants to bring us out of Egypt and set us free from slavery. That's what makes Good Friday so good. That's what Jesus took to the cross. God came down to set us free from our sin, our shame, our brokenness. God saw our suffering and walked right up into it and took it from us. Listen to what the Apostle Paul says about Passover. It's in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. He said, For indeed Christ, our Passover, was sacrificed for us. So now listen to Exodus chapter 12, verse 13, where it says, But the blood on your doorpost will serve as a sign marking the houses where you are staying. When I see the blood, I'll pass over you. This plague of death will not touch you. When I strike the land of Egypt. What a promise, it was powerful. Basically, blood sacrificed, which was then put on the sides of the doorposts and across the top on the lintel as a sign for death to pass over God's people, the blood of the Lamb a sign that they were His and He would deliver them. And then you think about Jesus and the sacrifice that we're celebrating or thinking about today. And of course, that sacrifice also involved Jesus, His blood spilling out so that you and I can be saved from the chaos of sin, from the shame and the things that have tried to rule us for so long. It was the blood of the Lamb, Jesus, that saved God's people from death. This is what John saw when he saw Jesus, a perfect lamb without blemish, whose blood was to save us from our sin, our slavery, the perfect sacrifice, the Passover lamb, whose last supper was the fulfilment of that very first Passover happening here, slain on Good Friday for all the people. Thank God for the power of the cross. His blood was a sign for us, not just for a night, but forever. His blood, our redemption, our forgiveness, our freedom, His death, our life everlasting. 
It reminds me of a song we sing called Good Grace. And it talks about a good God. It's a very good song for a very good Friday. You'd want to hear me sing it a little bit, wouldn't you? Jesus, my redemption. I just think, you think, because I'm around the world in Egypt, that I wouldn't want to sing when I speak, but I wouldn't be me if I didn't just try to sing a little bit. <laughs> hey, it says, my redemption is in His blood. Jesus came into Jerusalem for Passover at just the right time. It's actually called, the day was called the 10th of Nisan and was found to be without sin when on trial before the Sanhedrin. So they made up charges to ensure He'd be slain. Little did they realise that by condemning this spotless lamb to death, they were playing their part in God's gracious plan to save humanity from the power of sin and death. Little did they know that the lamb had been slain since before the creation of the world. Little did they know that the shedding of His precious blood was paying the price for their own sin and yours and mine. Little did they know that this Passover was like no other, that this lamb and His blood was really like nothing ever seen before and ever seen since. In Luke chapter 22, verse seven and eight, it's the verses that point to what we call communion, which we're going to celebrate together today. It's a Passover meal. And it says, then came the day of unleavened bread when the Passover must be killed. And He sent Peter and John saying, go and prepare the Passover for us that we may eat. So they went and found it just as He said to them and they prepared the Passover. When the hour had come, He sat down and the 12 apostles with Him. And then He said to them, with fervent desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I will no longer eat of it until it is fulfilled in the Kingdom of God. Then He took the cup and He gave thanks. And He said, take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the Kingdom of God comes. And He took bread, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, He also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. Jesus' body broken for you and for me, beaten for our healing, broken for our wholeness. Jesus' blood saved us from sin, delivered us from death, brought us out of Egypt and into an incredible new life. Jesus' blood, a sign for us and for death that we belong to God, purchased at the highest price. No longer slaves, but the children of God, people of the promise. Jesus' blood established a new covenant, a new promise for all of us, for all of time and for eternity. What a very good Friday. This is why God came down. This is why He had to die. This is how He saved us from our sins. This is how we came out of Egypt. Jesus, our Passover lamb. We're no longer slaves, but sons and daughters. We're no longer bound by sin and death, but have forgiveness and everlasting life. We're no longer held captive in Egypt, but are free to walk in the promise God has for us. Thank God for Jesus, the Passover lamb, who helps us to pass over the chaos, the nightmare and the shambles the devastation, the destruction that sin has brought to the world. Thank God for Jesus on this very Good Friday. My goodness, wasn't that spectacular? Can we thank Pastor Brian? for that incredible presentation. I can't wait for Sunday morning for part two, Resurrection Sunday. It's gonna be absolutely stunning. We're going to take a moment and, and take communion together this morning. And on your seats, you'll find a little box. And it looks
looks like this. It has the cross never grows old. And inside you'll find two of these little emblems. And we've got one for you this morning that you can take out now. And the other one is for you to take home. And the reason that we've done that is when Jesus broke bread with His disciples at that Last Supper, before Good Friday when He, when he went to that cross, you don't have to open it right now. I'll, I'll tell you what to do in a moment. Communion was never meant to be some religious thing that was reserved for holy days like today in churches. He used very common elements like bread and back then wine and today we have, you know, a wafer and juice. He used very common elements to show symbolically what was going to happen to him and what it was going to achieve for us and humanity for, for forever. And what we wanted to do today was, yes, we want to break bread today on Good Friday because it is a very good Friday for us. And we can't add to the sacrifice that that cross represents. That image that went around the world this week of the Notre Dame and one of the few things less left was that cross. You know, and it's not about the stat, you know, this replica of that statue of the cross, but the image that the cross represents. But you know, the we can take communion outside the four walls of this church, into our everyday life, into the lives of people who might feel they're not good enough, or maybe they're too unwell to get to church, or maybe when you and I feel like we're at our crummiest days and our worst days, the other communion is for that moment, that we stop and we break bread and we remind ourselves of the mercy and the hope and the forgiveness and the life that is in Christ, that He has already achieved for us, okay? So that's what that's for. You might wanna give it away, you might wanna break bread with somebody, you might wanna keep it for yourself, but that's to take, because we take it into the world, because that is the good news, amen? So our team have prepared this beautiful item, and in a moment we're gonna break bread, and when we do, basically, um, you peel off the top little plastic bit first, okay? And then you peel back the foil for the juice, okay? So. The guys are going to lead this beautiful song and then we're going to stand and we're going to take bread, the bread and the juice together. The Lord is my shepherd He goes before me
Jesus, we thank You on this Good Friday morning that this moment is not a club for insiders, but Lord, this table is a table for everybody. This is a table for every human being that ever is. And that Lord, this morning, it's about inviting people to Your table. There is no person, no sin, no past, no sickness, nothing that is too great for You, that You invite all of us to partake. So this morning, as we take this bread, we say thank You that You gave it all for us. Let's take this bread together. And this juice reminds us that He gave, He gave His body, He gave it willingly, He gave it gladly, and He, he just let Himself be poured out. Let's take it together. It's, it's got healing, it's got wholeness, it's got salvation. And let's just say thank you in our own way this morning. Come on church, let's let heaven hear our thanks this morning. Thank you, Lord, that you found us, that you see us, that we're not lost in this crowd this morning, that even right now in this moment, Lord, we can find you. Chris, come on, once more. Me, so I will walk in your come on, join in church. Your beautiful sense of God's presence in this place. If you'd stop still for a moment. Every week we give people an opportunity here to, to respond. And it's to respond to the good news. The good news that Jesus loves you so much. Yesterday, maybe today you'll see it, but painted in the sky was cross equals love. That's exactly it. That cross represents His love for each and every one of us. See, I don't know what how you came to be here or whether you came with a friend or a family member, but you're not here by accident. The truth is God loves you so much that He gave His life for you. Maybe you've heard that God's angry at you. Maybe you heard that God condemns you. Maybe you've heard that you have to fix yourself up before you get anywhere near God. Well, no friend, the God I know is into relationship and He says, no, you come as you are. You come to me first and I'll fix you. And in this place today, whether you're watching through the screens or whether you're in this room here in the parenting rooms, stop still for a moment. I have a simple question, friend. Do you know Jesus as your Lord and Saviour? If you don't, then I would love to lead you in a simple, powerful prayer of asking Him into your life. Maybe at one time you did pray this prayer, but you know in your heart, maybe you drifted away. Well, friend, He never drifted away from you. He's been with you and He's still there with you. And maybe today you just need to draw a line in the sand. You need a brand new beginning. Friend, would you let me lead you in this prayer? powerful prayer of asking Jesus to be Lord and Saviour of your life. If I can have every head bowed, every eye closed through the screens there, everyone to be thinking about where they stand when it comes to Jesus. Friend, do you know Him? Do you have a personal, real relationship with Him? If you don't, I would love to lead you. Maybe at one time you made that decision, but you've walked away, friend. He never walked away from you. He's the God of the second chance. And today is your day to respond. As one big church family, we're gonna say this prayer together. And if you're responding, I want you to say this with everything that is within you. Why don't you respond and give your life to Jesus? Come on, as one big church family, repeat this prayer after me. Dear Jesus, today is a brand new beginning. I choose you. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for dying for me. Would you help me, lead me and guide me? In Jesus' Name, come and live in my life. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, let's really congratulate and appreciate. Absolutely amazing.
And listen, if you responded, if you said that prayer from the bottom of your heart, maybe it was the first time, or maybe this is the second time, or third time, fourth time, whatever it is, listen, it's awesome. That's why we congratulated you just then. We wanna mark this day. We wanna help you uh, celebrate this day. This is a brand new Bible. It's a gift on behalf of our senior pastors, Brian and Bobby Houston and our entire church to mark this day where you decided to follow Jesus. When the service concludes, uh, when you walk out in different exit foyers, walk up to someone and say, hey, I prayed that prayer. Can I grab one of those Bibles? They're waiting for you. They're wanting to give you these Bibles and start a conversation and get you started on following Jesus. Come on, let's really congratulate it. Every single person one more time. Donna. Thank you, Peter. Well, we wanna thank you for taking the time this morning to be here for Good Friday and trust you've really enjoyed this service. Can't wait for Resurrection Sunday and really trust that you're gonna have a great and very, very happy, happy Easter weekend. Who's working over the Easter weekend? Lots and lots of people. Thank you for, oh, <laughs> <laughs> You're such a funny guy. One of our pastors is going, I'm working. You're gonna have lots of time off too. Um, a few things I do wanna let you know. For the, for the many that are visiting Sydney over the Easter weekend and, and family and friends that have come as guests this morning, we're so thrilled that you have. We've got a very special little um, guest pack for you. We'd love to give, it's only if you're, not for, the, not for you, Brent, you can't get that on the way out. And it's got a very low calorie treat in there, okay? So a little bit of incentive. So I'm... Um, so it's only if you are new or visitors, okay? The blue bag, if, if you find somebody who's been here far too many times, tell them to leave it alone, okay? And something that we do in our church every Easter time, we call it Kilo of Kindness. And we do a massive food drive because we have our charity, um, Hillsong City Care, and we do a massive food drive so that we can get plenty of groceries in because there's lots of families in our community that need a helping hand at this time. So whether you're just able to bring in some cornflakes or you wanna get a grab a grocery bag and bring it back on Sunday morning, we'd love everybody to pitch in if you can, or if you actually need a hand, we'd love you to let us know as well. So please grab that on your way out as well. So, um, and if you are travelling away on your holidays, make sure that you take it easy and go with Journey's mercies, okay? Could I pray for you before you leave this morning? And if you can stop around and join our welcome lounges, we've got plenty of hot cross buns out there. Again, calorie free, carb free over the Easter break. Who's starting their diet Tuesday? Me too. <laughs> Let me pray for you. Father, this morning we thank You. Thank You that it is a Good Friday. And may, Lord, the message of this morning go with us. May Your peace, Lord, rest on our hearts and our minds and our families and our troubles. Lord, may the hope that truly is in You be very real over this entire Easter weekend. And may, Lord, we reach out to our family and friends with the good news of Christ. Lord, I pray for Your people as we go into our day and our weekend, that Lord, joy and hope and the goodness of everything that You have already achieved for us, Lord, would be, Lord, so strong in our hearts. Bless Your people as we go, I pray in Jesus' Name. And the people of God said, Amen and Amen. Be blessed. Have a great day. Enjoy the beautiful long weekend and we'll see you on Sunday morning. God bless.